The Stanley Cup Finals and U.S. Open edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by Win Bet. Bet fifty dollars at Win Bet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with Win Bet. Download the Win Bet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold hard cash with our over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group, and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. And make sure to download the SGPN app to enter our free $250 US Open contest. Just download SGPN in the App Store and hit contest. This is Brian Bosworth, AKA. The Boz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. of the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Crame dog. No, on location, raspy voice craps table below <laughs> lots of things happen. Sean. Yes. We have Vegas voice, even though we're not <laughs> out in Vegas, it could just be the drinking yeah. all the networking and uh, we've been doing shout out to the FSGA, a uh, very fun conference here in Detroit. And uh Shout out to Win Bet, baby. We just did our first ever Win Bet Blackjack stream. It was a lot of fun. If you missed out, check it out on YouTube or check out our podcast. Cause uh some are saying a wild success. I, I Although mean, I lost a bunch of money, so yes. I'm not sure where that I won some money. It was <laughs> awesome. And again, you're winning money when you and when you play on Win Bet. Download that Win Betting app. Hundred percent deposit bonus up to one thousand dollars on the casino. I know it firsthand. I highly, highly recommend it. A lot of fun. Shout out to our dealers and uh, it, Sapphire. It was, shout out to Sapphire. Great, classy, uh, classy uh, dealer there. And the live dealer is really and got tons of feedback. Again, <laughs> hopefully, uh, Winbet Casino is coming to your state soon because it is so fun to play. Highly recommend it. And uh, again, it's great for the casino, great for the sports vets. Again, just head over to winbet.com. We're going to get to that. Uh, we got a ton of uh, great stuff here. We got the Stanley Cup finals um, uh, coming right up in a second. And US, US Open. Make sure you download the SGPN app, hit the contest tab, get in on our free US, uh, US Open contest. Perfect gift to uh, all the fathers out there. So oh. enjoy that. Uh, again, download the SGPN app and make sure you go to winbet.com. Bet big, win bigger. And now let's talk some hockey. Joining us on the show to talk NHL. You know him from the NHL Gambling Podcast. And of course, editing a ton of articles over at Sports Gambling Podcast, Mr. Ryan Gilbert. Ryan, Stanley Cup uh, Finals. We're here. We're doing it. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm happy to be on here though. I mean, it's it's a great Stanley Cup final here between the Lightning and the Avalanche. We've got the Lightning won the past two Stanley Cups, of course, and the Avalanche have been the the favorites for the cup for quite some time here. So it should be one of the best Stanley Cup finals in quite a while here. I and uh, totally an underdog, but Sean mispronouncing the name of the hockey gambling podcast. Oh, that that, that was a long <laughs> shot. The NHL gambling podcast. How so. did I miss that? <laughs> How did I miss uh, that? We've been drinking for a couple hours. We, maybe. We've been, maybe uh, something to do. Networking, with. Ryan. I always <laughs> elbows <laughs> out, Sean. <laughs> Elbows out. Whenever I tell my wife uh, I've been doing a lot of networking, she's like, "Oh my god!" I also at the conference <laughs> I did at the open bar, I did uh, accidentally uh, miss the bar <laughs> when I was setting my glass. <laughs> Uh, drink down and it shattered everywhere. Oh. And uh, <laughs> for those who know Sean, will know that's not. I, I uh, you know, not I'm a clumsy in, in, individual to begin with. You throw an open bar and and maybe I'll miss a couple uh. couple open netters, as they say oh, in the Stanley Wally Cup met. business. But uh, Brian, I'm 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 kind of torn here as a as no. a TMZ hockey fan, a guy who just you know kind of checks in, likes the action, mm -hmm. likes watching. And well, shout out to. Uh, the work you guys have been doing in the uh, hockey channel on the SGPN Slack, you guys 
Uh, you weren't able to make the, um, the the little happy hour we did, but oh. you guys were awarded the Dgens only hashtag Dgens only for yes. the uh, just insane degeneracy that goes on in the hockey Slack channel. So congratulations to you, Ryan, and everyone at the hockey <laughs> Slack channel. I'm kind of torn as a casual TMZ fan. I'm looking at one the Avalanche at minus one ninety, which okay, yeah, they mm. seem like they have the better. Uh, goaltender, they seem like they're coming in, just you know, coming in on a little bit of a heater. They have here. ice in Colorado. Yeah, but then on the <laughs> other end, Tampa Bay Lightning plus one fifty five, like they've won back to back Stanley Cup finals, and they're a plus one fifty dog. I think they would be if they won it, they would be the first team to win three in a row since the New York Islanders, all the way back to nineteen eighty to eighty three. Avalanche did win the cup all the way back in two thousand and one. So I'm kind of torn here. Like I, part of me just says like, hey, lean dog here. Because they're getting, they're, again, they have the experience, they have nothing to lose, and they're a dog. But then the odds of them winning three in a row seems kind of slim. What's your What's your take on this? Yeah, I mean, you said it. It's like it's forty years now. It's pretty much the modern era. Anyone listening to this probably has not seen those Islanders team repeat there. But the Lightning, I mean, they they've showed it here. But between their their sweep with the Panthers, I thought the Panthers took them down. But even without Braden Point, he should be back now. They took them down. Andre Vasilevsky has been been really good, but. This is the best team the Lightning have seen in the playoffs. They went down uh, 2 0 to the Rangers, who had just Durkin and not much else. So I think the Avalanche here, having home ice, should go up 2 0. And then I don't know if they'll relinquish that lead like the Rangers did. Uh, I'm hearing uh, maybe we can find a specific parlay uh, home, home game, home game, home oh, game, home win, game. Win game one, or uh, then they win in six, it sounds like, is, is what you fancy there with a minus one and a half. Maybe you think it might be shorter than six. You know, just exploring different ways to play the Avalanche, it seems like. I, well, uh, although but, I was going to say real quick, because just from a layman's uh, perspective, uh, how are we going to let Florida win three straight hockey titles? <laughs> yeah, no. They have their boat parade. Come on. <laughs> Championship city down there. Yeah, no, I mean you're absolutely right. But also looking at it like they're they're a team built to to win it all. They have the goalie, they have the top defenseman in Victor Hedman. He's been one of the best best overall just defensive defensemen in the league over the past few years. But this just to me seems like the Avalanche is here. They have McKinnon as one of the best forwards. They have Makara as one of the best defensemen. They have Taves helping out uh, Makara there. They have Landis Gog ranting in. Uh, Nazem Kadri injured his thumb on a hit from Evander Kane in the Western Conference final. He should be back. Like I said before, I don't think the Avs should be minus 185, nearly minus 200 favorites, but. I think they are the better team. And if you're looking for some sort of value bet here, like I said before, I like the spread at plus 120. Maybe look at them in five games at plus 375 at win bet or in six games at plus 500, five to one at win bet. Well, All right, and, and real I, quick. And, and I keep going back and forth with the Lightning because the Lightning, in a weird way, seem like a team that just keeps figuring out ways to win. I mean, the Rangers were up to nothing. I keep kicking myself well, for on. not betting huge on the on the Lightning then when they were up to nothing because the Rangers figure out a way to lose. And the team they played mm-hmm. before that, Pause. the Maple Leafs, they didn't figure out a way to lose. Brian Dable, New York angle here. Come Brian on. Dable just didn't go to Game Five. <laughs> that was the problem. Ryan, you're a Devils Un- fan at heart. Don't und- don't well, bring this. Nineteen forty. Uh, at the end of the day. <laughs> The reason, which by the way, of all the things, as much as I love to hate the Red Sox, screaming 1940 at Rangers fans was just all time. <laughs> uh, listen, I think Brian Dable goes to Game Five. They don't blow. It's a different series. Undefeated with that man in the building. So to say that the uh, the, the the Lightning won the series, I don't know. I think. Uh, I think well, New York I, took an L because Dave will have to I'm show going, everyone his power. He they had I, to show his he had to show his power, his true power. I, I'm going back and forth because you have to go back really far to remember the last time the Tampa Bay Lightning lost a playoff series. Mm-hmm. But then this year in particular, they've they faced some all time choke teams. Again, don't mean to rub oh. salt in the wounds to the uh, <laughs> to the Toronto Maple Leaf fans and all all our great buddies up north. So I, I'm like going a- back and forth. <laughs> I kind of like the value at plus uh, one fifty five over a win bet, but but to uh, uh, to Gilbert's point here, 
especially if the avalanche start out strong. I think even if the avalanche, you know, go one and one, you're still, you're still getting probably Can plus I, odds on the, uh, on the, uh, you know, on I, the lightning there. I, am I wrong, Ryan? Like if it's I mean, one, I mean, one, come, which Ryan are you asking? Cause yeah, exactly. there's, Gilbert, there's Gilbert, if it's, <laughs> if it's one, one going back to Tampa Bay, what do you think the series price is? I was talking with uh, Joel and Talon before we recorded the hockey game podcast last night. I was saying like in this series, generally, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be dependent on what happens in, in the first two games. So if you like the lightning uh, win bet has the lightning in six at plus 600 lightning in seven at plus 575. So maybe just sprinkle both of those. I don't see this, this series really going four or five games. So you can get some definite value there, but I still lean to the avalanche unless Kemper just completely shits the bed. They, they should be able to, to get it done in, in, in six would be my, my, my best bet at a plus 500 on win oh, bet, but such a nice bet. this, this should be, this should be a long series. You have the lightning. They know how to win. The playoffs are just a completely different animal. They block shots. They get stuff there. So this, this is the series that I think the NHL or, maybe not NHL, but hockey fans want to see coming into the playoffs. You have the two time defending champ lightning here against the quite, quite honestly, I think the best team in the league here, the avalanche who, who should win this. Yeah, no. And, and, uh, and your point, uh, the, the four to two, the four to three or the, I mean, honestly, you know, kind of looking at the, if you like the avalanche, I think playing avalanche in six or avalanche in seven is is probably better than playing Avalanche minus one and a half at plus one twenty because I to your point I don't see it going four one or a sweep. Is there is there a Scott Foster of mm. the NHL that we should be worried about? Obviously, That's the a great NBA, question. The NBA uh, way more blatantly crooked than the NHL. Not not opposed to extending series. Is there is there a ref we have to worry about, or is there any reason you shouldn't look to, to take the over as far as uh, number of games? Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a Scott Foster mm-hmm. there. I, I've I've been watching as a very casual uh, NBA fan, and I've just <laughs> been questioning myself. Like the NBA just has to be rigged based off how this <laughs> how these playoffs has been going. But yeah, I mean, my my first inkling was Avalanche in five, but somehow WinBet has that as the most likely option at plus three seventy five. Mm. I don't think it's the most likely option. If that was closer to plus 500, like abs and six was, I, I would recommend that. But abs and six plus 500 abs and seven plus 400. If, if you think in destiny, if you think the lightning are going to continue their, their dynasty plus one and a half games, minus 145 Ooh. for the series to go pretty long. It is a safe bet there with this team that can get it done. But I don't know. I just think they're, they're too top heavy. Braden point is injured. He might come back and the avalanche. They just seem to be on a mission here. I mean, even after winning every series, they've had two sweeps so far. It's just been, okay. That series is done. Let's go on to the next one. It reminds me of the Phillies in 08 where they were like, okay, we yes. got this done. Let's move on. It's mission accomplished. Let's get this, let's get this title. So I think the avalanche, I don't know if I'll lay minus 185 minus 190 on the money line, but the, uh, the spread there plus 120 or sprinkle in uh in six a plus 500 or in seven a plus 400 I, would be my uh, recommendation I like that Colorado in six angle that's a fun one no that's uh, and and to his point I mean I I'm still kind of leaning lightning with the plus odds but the the fact that you're getting avalanche in six at that nice price or avalanche in seven uh, I think that's a pretty Pretty good number. What about the uh, the Con Smythe Trophy? Ooh, uh, ooh, a fun future nice. to play here. Do you mm-hmm. have any thoughts? Uh, Kale McCarr is the favorite at plus one eighty five. You have Nathan McKinnon nipping at his heels at plus two ten. Uh, and, and any thoughts here on the on the Con Smythe? Yeah, I think the Con Smythe is kind of the way to go here. If you're, especially like if you're looking towards the the Lightning, you have if the Lightning win this series, it's going to be based off their goaltending, Vasilevsky versus Kemper. Vasilevsky four to one, four hundred yeah. to win to win the Con Smythe. So if they get it done, I think it'll be Vasilevsky kind of shutting it down. So that'll be my one of my good bets there. Also, Stephen Stamkos he had a good 
end of this series against the Rangers. He's 15 to one. Personally, I put a $50 free bet on him at 40 to one during the Eastern Conference final. So hopefully that comes in for me if the Avalanche don't get it done. Oh man. But yeah, for on the Av side, I think it is Makar. He's outscored McKinnon so far. He's proving that he's the, the most important player on them. Even uh, Joel has, has admitted that as an Avalanche fan. So <laughs> if you're looking at Conn Smythe, I would look at Makar for the Avs and either Vasilevsky or Stamkos for the Lightning. So maybe that's the way to play the the Avalanche then. Yeah, you know, I w- I was thinking I was trying to look at the Avs and uh man, uh Vasilevsky at, at plus 400. I I love that. All right, let's let's just get to game 1, close it out oh. there. Right now the uh There are alt, alt lines, FYI. Alt lines on the series or or game 1? Game 1. <laughs> oh, game 1. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Money line is uh Avs minus 160, Lightning plus 120, or you can take uh Avalanche minus one and a half plus one fifty five. Total sitting at six. What's the play here for game one, Ryan? I and I think Talon and Joel both agree with me on the hockey game podcast here. I'm all over the Avalanche at minus one sixty. I think this is still a bit mispriced. I think the Lightning should be less than plus one forty, but the Lightning got smoked in game one against the Rangers. I think it was six three. They lost game one against the uh, Maple Leafs, who is the most comparable opponent to the Avalanche. It was five nothing there. So I think the Avs with their high powered offense, they have good defense that lightning really haven't seen in a recent series. So I think the abs at a minus 160 or even minus one at plus one Oh five could both be good looks. And I do think this series will be higher scoring than the earlier one. So I think over six at minus one ten, you can always root for goals there. It's always fun to root for goals. So that's a good bet. Oh, all right. So it sounds like it sounds like Team Ryan doesn't have to speak before coming up with a great plan because what do you got? You got well, a parlay I, cooking. I immediately there? was over here looking at the alt lines and I'm like, hey, you know what? High scoring. Everyone likes to bet on goals. Why wouldn't we say over seven and a half plus two forty five? Oh, oh. Nice also, line. heading over the puck line. To your point, you pulled out my nugget. The Lightning have started slow in every one of these series. Colorado minus two and a half. Sean plus two ninety five. The alt god has spoken. Oh my god. Thou shall <laughs> fucking bet these off. If I can find a place to parlay the alt uh puck line for the avalanche with the alt total, yes please. Here's what I'll do. <laughs> Here's what I'll do. I, I like mean, I'm twisting your arm over here. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna co-sign <laughs> Ryan's oh. very solid play of the Avalanche in six. However, if the lightning go down O2, I am hammering them on the series price. And even if right now it's uh what plus 155 for them to win the series, if it gets any even if it's one one going back home and it's better than 155, I'm hammering that. So I'm hedging Let's a go. little bit. Give me Avalanche uh winning the series four to two, but I really think the Lightning, if they go down 0 2, they're going to be live dogs in this series. Because this team just has nothing to lose. They're playing with such house money. And I could see, and obviously the Avalanche don't have the choking history of the Rangers or the Maple Leafs, but maybe this Lightning team just has a certain sense of mojo that I don't want to go against necessarily. So I'm, I'm kind of finding a sweet middle ground. Avalanche and six at the nice price there. And then lightning, if they go down O2, wow. hammer that series. It's press. a full strategy. All right, last thing I'll say, because I just realized yes. you uh, you have first period regulation bets available to you as well. Oh. Uh, I mean, Colorado Avalanche win the first period, Colorado Avalanche win the game, Sean. Yep. Just just b- b- spitball with me. What would you think that might pay? Would you be surprised to hear plus 255? Wow. And wait, but so. What if it's what if it's zero zero in period one? Is oh, then a, then if you feel like you need to hedge, tie avalanche win is five to one. Okay, I'm gonna make that my <laughs> official play for game one. <laughs> tie in the first period, avalanche win the game. Love it at five to one. Very uh very juicy dog. All right, Ryan, before we uh let you go here. Oh my god, the Phillies are blowing this oh game. No. A little uh, side action. <laughs> it's tied eight eight. God damn it. Uh all right, Ryan, before we let you go, obviously everyone check out oh yeah, the hockey gambling podcast. Subscribe uh there and and follow Ryan on Twitter at Twitter R uh Gilbert S O P. 
But what is your what is your lock here for the series, and what's your favorite long shot? Uh, my lock would probably be the Avalanche just to win the series at, at minus one eighty five. I think they're they're the much better team, even with the goaltender discrepancy. They have the better offense. They have a few lines there. They have a few few good defensive bears that should be able to slow down the lightning. I think they can finally get it done, even though they, they do have some choke me history in the second round, but they finally got past that. So they should be able to get it done here in the Stanley cup final. As far as the long shot is concerned, I, I would go back to my uh, abs in six at plus 500, even though oh. game six will be in Tampa Bay. I think the abs, if they're up three, two, they should be able to uh, close that out. And as far as game one's concerned, I, th- I thought you guys were going to take just the abs in the over five and a half is plus 165 if you want that. And in the series, it, you can take the avalanche to win game one and the series hmm. at plus odds. I think that that's a good look as well, rather than taking them at minus 185. I mean, I'm not going to argue with any of that. It, it sounds like we're all on the same page. All right. Yeah. Add on to my ticket there. Uh, abs to uh, win in over five and a half in game one. I think they light it up. And again, that's why I think it's fun to play the lightning there late as a dog. All right, Ryan, appreciate you coming on the pod and uh, check out the hockey gambling podcast. And don't forget to let it slide. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Always uh, happy to come back. Oh yeah. Awesome time talking uh, with Ryan Gilbert, talking a little hockey again. Uh, NBA player props. They've been so fun parlaying them. And you can do that over at sleeper.com slash SGP. And you get that hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100. You could join our squad. Shout out to moon off. Just cash his a three team player prop parlay mm. from game five. That is a plus 500 proposition. Big dogs only over there. You can win as much as a two X all the way up to 20 X. And you got to go to sleeper.com slash SGP, 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers, terms of use for details. And while we're here, let's talk manscaped. You want your hockey stick clean? You want your golf club uh, nice and clean? You want to get out of the deep rough? Fire up that lawnmower 4.0. Again, you know, come on. If you're, if you're trying to get uh, your caddy, aka, uh, your lady to take a look at your club. You need a clean service. You need to, you need to get that uh, grass all the way trimmed down, make it easily accessible. And you can do that with the lawnmower 4.0 waterproof and it has a 400 K led spotlight. I don't know what that means, but I'll be honest the, 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 the man's the lawnmower 4.0. It just works. And they're throwing in the brand new boxers 2.0. Dare I say it, the best boxers around. 20% off and free shipping with the code SGP at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use that promo code SGP and ensure that you can keep hearing more Manscaped reads. Manscaped.com, promo code SGP. Joining us on the line to talk US Open. They are the hosts of the Golf Gambling Podcast. The the latest uh, trend here on uh, golf gambling Twitter rising through the charts. First, we got Steve Shermer, noted Giants fan, for the show, uh, giving <laughs> Capper a lot of crap about uh, Joe Judge possibly becoming the Patriots offensive coordinator. What's happening, Steve? Oh, not much. I mean, other than needle in my uh, co-host about uh, <laughs> giving the Giants all of uh, our former problems. No, I'm looking forward to talking about Brookline tonight. Talk about some rock outcropping, some quirkiness of the golf course. Let's do it, boys. <laughs> Fuck yeah! We're, I mean, we rock been, outcroppings, Ryan. That's we, we got to get Manscaped. We need some sort of crossover with Manscaped <laughs> and the outcroppings. Yes, <laughs> clean it up. You're in the deep rough, Manscaped uh, 4.0 oh, lawn power. Man- We'll get you. You out. think Manscaped maybe needs a deep dive uh, grass analyst, aka <laughs> Pubic? <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, yeah, you're the gonna Bermuda. Wanna... Ryan, do you have Bermuda down there, or is it the? Uh... Well, it, it affects the way you want to cut it, the grain, <laughs> the angle. You know, you don't want to uh, the rotation of the ball. It's it's all different. Uh, that there. two reads in one podcast. <laughs> Joining us as well, the co-host, Golf Gambling Pod. Mr. Boston Capper, Capper, what's happening, man? How about those Celtics? How are we feeling? Yeah, yeah, fucking great. Bunch of ballless pukes, ballless pukes, choked away, two games in a row. 
always just want to whine to the officials. Like, like Marcus Smart fucking got, got like got flopped like a good, by like an NFL linebacker. Like, of course you're not getting the call, man. Like you can't fly 30 feet when a guy who's 130 pounds puts his elbow into you. Like stop <laughs> flopping, stop looking for the fucking shot. Go to the, they just, oh, they, they're so fucking frustrating. So frustrating. That was mostly just to hear him pronounce Marcus Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it, it turns he turns the last Dude, name smart into three syllables. At some somehow. point, someone's gonna try to cancel you for tr- <laughs> picking on handicapped people. <laughs> <laughs> he has a speech impediment. Uh, Listen, we were here first. Everybody else has an accent. Boston was first. You guys all talk it's about a it. Baby okay, that's fucking it wheel, man. Uh, all right, let's let's get to it. Let's talk a little U.S. Open. You guys have been cranking out a ton of content. Oh yeah, appreciate it. But before we even get to the U.S. Open. We have to talk about uh well first off Rory McIlroy he's taking shots at oh, the uh, yeah. the live tour which uh Kramer <laughs> let me know this uh, and totally somehow missed it LIV is the Roman numerals for 54 because the live tournament only plays 54 holes Steve uh as a man who has the the finger on the on on golf's Pulse. What is your take on? I thought you were going to say on golf's all fifty-four holes. <laughs> no, what's what's your take on the on the drama? You know, regarding the PGA Tour and then people getting kicked out of the PGA Tour. I feel like we have to hit on this up top before we get to the U.S. Open. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the talk before the tournament. I mean, the, I mean, it all started pretty much about three years ago. If you guys don't really know the story, it, the, basically what happened was there was this upstart league where they wanted to do 54 holes. They wanted to incorporate some team play. Basically they were going to pay ungodly amounts of money to a bunch of the top players in the world to come play this tour. They kind of wanted to formula like it was formula one. And it was actually from there. Basically was organized by a bunch of uh, British bankers. Well, the Saudis, basically wanted to get their hands into this stuff and kind of want to improve their image of the world. So they ripped off the idea completely. They brought in Greg Norman to be the CEO yeah. of the thing. And then they've just been drilling oil holes and, you know, bringing some cash up to the surface and just throwing it all these players. So th- there's been some obscene money getting thrown out. You got Phil Mickelson, 200 million bucks, 250 million Johnson. for Phil yeah. Mickelson. I mean, I, I feel like we have to just stop and talk about Phil Mickelson, Phil Mickelson. How much does he have left from that? This is yeah. How much has he <laughs> lost? 42, 42 million. He had, what he, has he had, 42. he had 180 million on the Celtics money line game. Uh, five. A lot of, well, I, I think a more, it would be more of a, I think he, you know, a lot of people probably saw that news and was like, really buddy, you still owe me a couple bucks. Yeah. There's probably, <laughs> exactly. there's, pro- there's probably a couple local bookies are like, Phil got paid. All right. <laughs> He told Ryan, me Ryan, Ryan's cousins from Providence were like, "Hey, <laughs> hold on a minute. I don't. Hold on. Didn't, uh, didn't we make some bets era, over we got to make a drive and talk to Phil. Era. I don't think any of the uh, the local guys in the Northeast have the moral <laughs> concern of collecting the Saudi money. Era, no, are we sure? Don't. Are we None. sure we're allowed to take this? Era, it's uh, blood money. Era. Uh, mm. All right, Steve. So <laughs> we're going a little off the rails, but like. Uh, you know, Phil criticized the league, then immediately took it back, and then accepted a quarter billion dollars from the league. As a as a TMZ golf fan, what what am I missing here? Like, is, is this not a crazy? It, it would be like someone accusing the NIL, uh, it, you know, like a college football player oh. saying the NIL deal is crooked and it's destroying this country, and then accepting a two hundred fifty million dollar deal. Like, what am I am I missing oh. something? You sit at the bar. No, you're not, you're, you're yeah. not missing anything. It's two hundred. Hundred million dollars, yeah, you know, put in front of him. Yeah, but I mean that—that's the whole crux of this thing. And like, listen, you know, am I happy that this league is backed by Saudi Arabia? No, not really. But just looking overall, like, what do you expect these guys to do? Like, do you really think all these guys care about the legacy of the PGA tour when they got to <laughs> yeah. play 25, 28 events a year, maybe make $5 million when these guys are just going to throw them 50 million, a hundred million just up front, by the way. And then you have ungodly sums of money in order to basically play their tournament. So last week, Charles Schwartzel, who has done practically nothing for the last five years, won the tournament because it was kind of a dog shit field. He got $4.8 <laughs> million. For yeah. that. He ends up winning the team competition wins another $750 million. He probably won more than he won the last two years on the PG tour. And that's he not even won when he got to come over there. He, he won over $5 million. In <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it was like 4.8 yeah. and then like another yeah. 750 on top of that. Yeah. No, so, and, and, that, and that's, and that's what's happening. Like they're poaching a lot of these middle-class guys who just can't get the sponsorship or just the recognition. They have this bullshit pit 
program that the PGA Tour throws. Basically, it's a popularity contest. And yeah, no one knows how it works either, by the way. <laughs> right. the, the PGA is just like, yeah, these are the 10 most popular players. Here's an extra payout. Yeah. So like all these guys are blaming players because, you know, they don't, they're turning, you know, they, they, they don't, they should care more about the John Deere or the 3M Open or the Bay Hill and everything. No, these guys just care about cash. They just want to drive their boats. And like, you know, the only thing that's going to suck is for golf fans is that like, kind of like what happened back in the the nineties with the open uh, wheel racing, where they just split into two. You basically you're just going to have a, an already watered down product splitting mm. golfers basically across the two leagues. Like there's already too many guys that play on the PGA tour that have cards. Like it's just, I, 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 my hope is I want only one to survive. I don't really care what, if I had to choose, like I like some of the ideas from live. Like I like the limited schedule. I like 48 guys. I like the team concept. Like, like Capra and I were talking uh, before our show today. It just, it's such a grind on the PGA tour. Like there's no off season. There's no op button. And just like, sometimes you get to events where it's just like, Oh, why do I care? Like if it wasn't for gambling, like it's, it, it, it's <laughs> here you tough, go, Steve so. company, man. I like, <laughs> it. yeah, I, I, I don't blame the players for taking the money. It, no, I, I no. Just, and I, and I it's, can't. you know, as, as a proud American, I'm all about USA. I don't think you should murder journalists, but you know, on the other <laughs> side, if someone said, I'll Hey, take. <laughs> if someone said, I'm going to give you $250 million to do, to do what you're doing, but just to do it over in England. And we call it the live tour. <laughs> It's like, how do you not do that? It's, it's also co- odd that we've, uh, again, like many things over the last couple of years, like we're deciding in this moment in history to stand on our platform yeah. and say, this is the most egregious thing that's well, ever happened. It's like, do you really want formula look- one is huge. Netflix is like, everyone's like, Ooh, formula one, formula one takes cigarette money, takes Saudi money, takes all of this yep. shit. No one's talking about it. Well, and you could go, you could go down an NBA China rabbit oh. hole as well. Capper. That's uh, where the money comes from. As, as a Bad fan, people. as a fan of golf in the NFL, I was texting this to my buddies. It, in my mind, it's hilarious to think, what if the Saudis just wanted to take over the NFL? And what if they just said, Hey, we're going to start the Saudi <laughs> football league. And uh, you know, instead of Aaron Rodgers making 50 million, he's making $250 million. Is there any chance the Saudis expand on their, on this golf tournament and go into other sports? Well, they're already doing that, right? So they've already done that in other sports, right? That's that I don't give a fuck about, right? Like soccer and yeah. racing and shit like that. Like, like I like I don't give a shit about those, but they're already expanded in that. And and you're right. Like it the thing that's pissing me off about the whole fucking thing is like you guys said, the the soapboxing. Like I, I hate both sides at this point so much. <laughs> and it's a week and a half in. It's a week and a half in. I hate both sides. Like these guys carrying the PGA tour water, like uh, and listen. Great. I came to golf late. I didn't pick up golf until my late twenties. So I don't have the same like love for some of the history uh, that like Steve and and guys like Andy lack might have. Like I I got into it because I like to play it with my buddies and I found a way to gamble on it. And it was a niche for me and I really (laughs) enjoyed it. Right. Like I don't, I don't have the same 30 year, 40 year emotions attached to it. And it's a hundred percent a business decision. And I get that the Saudi government is fucking bad. Guess what? So is fucking BP. So is everything else you want to dig and dive into. And I get these degrees of evil, but at the same point, like, listen, man, I just want to watch a good product and it is what it is. If I can bet on it, I don't care. I just don't want it to be a diluted product. Like Steve said, it's already diluted. No. Yeah. And and that's, that's probably where it, where it becomes the most frustrating is because the PGA tour, you're driving, you're, you're looking to cobble together interest to begin with. And it's like, Hey, we're betting on this. Okay. There's a little action, but maybe, you know, it's not like every week, the biggest names are playing these things. And the, uh, the other thing is obviously the PGA tour is separate from major events like the U S open, like the masters where that there is where they would actually have leverage against these guys. If they knew by playing in the live yeah. tour, they wouldn't be able to play in the masters. Okay. Then you actually have some leverage against them, but these other like random PGA tour events, well, they're, you know, whatever enjoyable and you can bet on them and it's, it's entertaining enough. It's not really leverage against these guys. Not to mention golf's the ultimate game of fun ways to gamble, fun ways to play. Yeah. And to your yeah. point, you know, sometimes we need something that isn't going to be the final product to come in and like spike a market and cause a little Man. disruption 
And man, you would hope so, man. You would, but these, I mean, they still cater to the fucking seventy year old guy falling asleep on his <laughs> well, couch yeah. on fucking Sunday. But that's versus here, the guys who pay for, like, I pay for fucking whatever it is, fucking whatever I can watch my Thursday golf on, wheel, just, man. and my Friday golf on. Like, it, like it's just, it's, it's insane. Like, like cater to us. Like, we, I have money to spend. Make the product better. Well, like, and, and I get that they don't have all the money in the world, like the Saudis, where they don't have to run ads. I'm fine with ads. Maybe don't fucking run an ad when somebody's coming down the stretch on Sunday and I get to watch play through and I don't hear anything. And God knows what happened. We're already on a five minute delay. Like, I just hope it improves the PGA's broadcast. I would rather the PGA win out, right? Obviously, just fuck Saudi Arabia, really. But uh, I mean, other than that, like, like push it, but you, I don't think I think the PGA is just so stuck in their ways and dug in their heels. They already don't give a fuck about their main fans. They give no fucks about me, who like to gamble and spend money on the product. Zero. Well, they I mean, want, they they, they, they have to decide to on the do, fucking recliner. Yeah, do they want to be baseball or do they want to be like hockey or one of these right. sports that's attempted to be progressive? Right. And I well, they, they, ahead, they need to restructure at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they think that just going on camera, trotting out the commissioner and saying like, these guys are selfish and that we're going to protect the membership. And, you know, if you're going to continue to trot out 150 man fields and try and get basically people to just care about a random event in March, it's not going to work for them because at the end of the day, their biggest asset are the players. That's all they care about. Like, it, like I would like that the golf course would be like the star when you go watch it. It isn't all my friends who don't watch golf. All they care about is who is playing. And if these guys are just going to, you know, they're just going to keep spending and spending and spending until they get enough guys to go over there. And it's just going to reach a tipping point with the PGA tour where they're just going to let you know, just with a couple handful of stars and just this void of just like kind of crap direct fields. Like it's, it's not going to be interesting or compelling. It, it, just you know. last week, just last week was fucking garbage. Uh, let me like, ask a real dumb question. Are, are there like, are they like golfers aren't unionized? Are they by being no, by they're fucking private yeah, so, contractors? So you have a situation here that can very much mimic college what's happening in college, right? You have a clear uh, lack of true capitalism going on. <laughs> And now golfers who are like, who cares where the market value is coming from? If someone's willing to pay Dustin Johnson, $200 million, he's worth $200 million. And so the PGA can't be mad just because the money's coming from a bad place and they can't try to brush it under. I, I, like I would say if I was a golf, like, I think like not going too deep into this, it does seem like people stop at the Saudi thing and stop just say, okay, it's a bad idea. Not really thinking like, well, you know, golfers are probably being like fucked at like the PGA tour sounds like an establishment. That's not been in the best interest of golfers. And yeah. so, and so like, I, it is odd to see like who is actually stepping up for the PGA tour. It seems like almost only the big, like, uh, like special, like favorite sons of the PGA yep. tour who will benefit from what they've done. So, you know, yeah. that being said, the fact that Tiger Woods turned down a reported half billion dollars. No, a bit. No, 900. Oh, oh yeah. my God. God bless Tiger I mean, if Woods. If you're Tiger Woods, why don't you just launch your own Tiger Woods tour? Because I mean, he he's, likes. He's going to. I mean, he's going to either end up being the, the face of the PGA tour at some point, taking over the senior tour, right? Like, whatever. Like, it, it doesn't matter. But to Ryan's point, as far as like the, the capitalism aspect of it, you're 100% right. Uh, and, and the thing is, is like, Guys like Jay Moynihan want to like like prop up like their moral fucking high ground, dude. You just want to keep your private jet and your fucking money. Like <laughs> that's it. That's all you give a shit about. Like don't don't come to me about charity and all this other bullshit. You're running a business and and don't don't piss up a rope and tell me it's fucking raining, right? Like well, that's it. And the like, la this is the last <laughs> thing I'll say before we get on to the the meat of the show. But I mean. Where was the PGA when uh, they weren't letting women into Augusta? Oh wow! Where, 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 <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, I in my lifetime, like when I was old enough to be in a, like a, a, a have opinions, right. people were protesting outside of Augusta. Yeah, and, and golf. And listen, golf is inherently like you got to think about it, right? So. And this is why, like, dude, when I was a kid, I, I made a joke. Golf, golf is one ago. of the more inclusive sports all time, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely, right. And I, I made a joke, like, listen, eighteen-year-old me would kick my own ass if I was talking about fucking. I did a golf gambling podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bunch of rich white kids grow up very fucking privileged. You know what I mean? Like, oh. I mean, we can, go, we can go down that rabbit hole, but let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the U.S. Open and it's America. A uh, bunch of a bunch of big name golfers. Can we call it the USA Wait, Open can, this year? Yes. Can I, can I can I tell you a great little nugget? Sure. So 
they make all these guys carry these bags, including the Englishmen that have the start date of the Revolutionary War. Oh, hell yes. Let's fucking go. Never forget. Only Boston. Let's go. <laughs> we got the USA Open, Ryan, and nice. it's at the uh, country club in, in beautiful Brookline, Massachusetts. We had the uh, 2013 USA Amateur and the 1999 Ryder Cup there. Uh, Zell Torres, Scheffler, and Justin Thomas played in the 2013 amateur. So again, a while back, uh, Rory looks to be kind of the favorite coming in hot after his nice RBC Canadian win. But uh, Steve, talk to us here. What do we think in course? What well, do real we, quick before, yes. I, cause you forgot one key point. There is water. Unfortunately, I don't think it's large enough to house any baby whales. So that, <laughs> the, don't expect any baby no, whales no, on the no course. No sightings of any baby whales. But Bob. yeah, uh, <laughs> Steve, walk us through the course. Your thoughts on the type of players that will benefit uh, from playing at the country club and and kind of early thoughts before we get to our DFS idol uh, and and where you're what yeah big takeaways here. Yeah, sure. So uh, if you go to sportsgamingpodcast.com, I wrote a uh, two part. Uh, Brookline preview that was 5,400 words. I did not anticipate it being 5,400. Oh you just got me going and going. Well, and going this and is, going and I, you know, pulling back the curtain. Some of these guys, we have to remind them like, Hey guys, if you don't get up to 500 words, the search engine won't, won't index your article. It's not really worth that much to us. Steve's like, I'm whittling it down to 5,400. You know, it's, it's all I can do. No, it's not a problem. Thank you, Steve. You're, <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. So anyways, I appreciate the so analysis. I, so I so I I put I put a lot of videos, a lot of useful videos about the, the country club. I, I put a whole by whole video. Uh, I put a video with the where the interview the architect Gil Hansen just reno, did a renovation there. Uh it's very useful to go watch. If I can give you a cliff note summary of it, it's very old golf course. Um, you know, a lot of quirkiness, a lot of character to it. I, I mentioned the rock outcroppings. Basically, what they had to do is and and, and uh my co is gonna attest to it like just it's very rocky terrain in that region. And it's, it's it wasn't a golf course where you kind of like build the, you know, the golf course, like, you know, or, you know, mo- shape the land, everything you had to build it in the land. You had to like basically hammer it. And that's kind of what they did. There's a lot of awkward holes, this place, like a lot of elevated tee shots down to like, you know, like a narrow, like a narrow, like fairways down below you. A lot of fairways are cantered towards um, some hazards. Uh, the greens are really tiny. Uh, there's some, you know, pretty nasty bunkers there too. So, you know, some of the things I've been looking at, I, I looked a little bit more at not just at the the golf course, but just what generally has worked at the U.S. Opens. Because at the end of the day, the U.S. Open kind of wants to just protect par, and they set up golf courses to protect par. Just the venue's a little different. And one of the things I've noticed, it hasn't really mattered if you know golf courses are shorter, like Brookline is. Although it plays, it's going to play a little longer in what the scorecard yard is, just based on just like the type of the pro shots or and off the tee shots you have. Um, it doesn't matter how short or longer golf courses or narrow or firmer. If there's tight lies, thick lies, driving distance and performance off the tee has been like the thing that mattered the most over the last you know couple of years. And it's probably just because these guys don't really care anymore. The equipment they use, the ball has never gone straighter and longer off the tee. It's just, they attack it in a different way than they did back in like 1990 or even 2013. So that's one of the things I think I looked at this week. Um, definitely have to gain a lot of strokes off the tee. I feel like you can't win the U S open without it. Um, I feel like sometimes it varies if accuracy or, you know, or matters or not. I feel like it's going to matter this place. This is more of a course where you can't just bomb it mindlessly. Like you got to care about where you hit it in the fairway. You got to make sure you avoid some really tricky areas. The rough is going to be pretty thick. Although I think earlier reports is it might be a little more manageable than what people let on. Um, and I also noticed too, is that anytime you went to some of these shorter ish U S open setups to smaller greens, iron play has been very important, especially because it you know, the biggest way to protect it is really gnarly rough around the greens. These greens are also really significantly sloped too. There's a lot of false fronts where if you miss in the wrong spot with your approach shot, you're going to have a really difficult time getting up and down. Uh, My co-host and I, like, I think we're generally on the same page. He's valuing scrambling a little more than I am this week, just based on some more historical trends I've seen. I'll let him talk about why he's scrambling, uh, valuing that a little more, but yeah, just like, you know, I'm focused on guys that, you know, are pretty good off the tee, Distance is going to matter because getting out of the rough to these small greens, it, it, it always helps a little more club head speed. Uh, I want a good combination of length and accuracy, really elite iron play. Um, and just you're not a train wreck off the green. That's basically what I'm kind of looking for this week. All and right. uh, I'm looking I feel like at he just gave us the cheat, the, the notes to well, pass yeah. the exam. And, uh, now, can I implement? No, 
No. It's someone like giving you the answers to the test and you still get a C minus. Well, it's like if you don't understand <laughs> geometry oh, yeah. and someone gives you the answer, but you're like, whoa, shit. Well, and 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 you really have to check out Steve's writing. I mean, very it's it's, it's super in depth I, and I honestly like one one of our best writers, one of the best writers. Well, I was gonna ask a layman like in the industry. Super no, super it, high, high uh, in the industry. TMZ 100%. take, but are there are there is there anywhere else on the internet that you can find an article with fifty four hundred words with this kind I'm, of in depth I'm looking analysis? At part two, and again he broke it up in two parts. That's how much he's got on the US <laughs> Open and he breaks down what he's valuing in order of importance. T to green efficiency, off the tee performance, number three, iron play, four putting, five score. Scrambling now, Capper. To Steve's wow. point, you you value scrambling a little bit more. Ca- not not scrambling. Sorry. Right, so scrambling is oh, just your sorry. ability to get up and down for the pot, right? Yes. So yeah, when I say I mean general around the green game. That's oh, okay. Just sorry. I, yeah. Right. Around so the so around the green, I, listen, I do take it more into effect. And, and, and we listen. I don't. I don't. I'm not obviously discounting what Steve says. He's fucking smarter than I am with this shit. Like there's no question <laughs> about it, right? But like my my instincts say that if we're going to have the course play the way it's supposed to play. The greens are insanely fucking hard to hold and, and guys are going to be rolling off. And if you miss your spot by a foot, you're going to have to chip and then putt. Like I need somebody who's good around the green and it might not have come into play at previous U S opens, but it, Steve and a lot of the guys take like long, long-term trends into effect. But I kind of look at it like a football thing. Like, I don't give a shit what the 2007 Patriots did. It doesn't fucking matter how good they were at home in the last fucking 50 games. It doesn't matter to me, right? Like, what have you been doing lately? And I feel like this is a course where you're going to need to be tough around, where you need to be really good around the green. Like, if you miss it, which everyone's going to miss. I mean, we're talking, we'll see, what do you think? Like 50%, 45% what are we talking? I I, I don't think it's going to be that. The lowest it's been in the last 10 years has been 51%. That was at Pebble Beach where it was rock hard greens. And Dude, these greens are super hot. I sent you this, this shit today. <laughs> oh, there's, God okay, there's, there's, Again. <laughs> super hot. <laughs> we'll have a conversation <laughs> offline between, con- between firmness and... And yeah. quick. Because I just, I just love those terms. Last I love days. Steve and Cafford's like arguing <laughs> offline on how firm <laughs> greens are going to be. This is why uh, I, mean, I, I think the green regulation rate is going to be like 53, 54. Uh, it's still super low, right? So regardless, yeah. right? It's, so, it's, it's low. Yeah. So it's low. So I, if you're not hitting the greens, and these guys literally say, uh, like uh, there's some guys that follow on Twitter uh, who who are on the grounds, so and we actually have some guys on the Slack channel on the ground. Oh. And the guys were asking, like, "Hey, well, like, listen, they're aiming. Like, if we're gonna miss, like, I'd rather just fucking miss in the bunker because it's gonna be really bad around the green. So you need to be really good out of the sand. You need to be able to putt good on fast undulating greens, and you better be able <laughs> to get up and down. So give me, listen, I, 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 maybe I'm factoring around the green too much. I don't." Uh, I, I'm taking a stand. I don't think I'm wrong in this. And I, listen, I could be. I'm wrong all the fucking time. But I think around the green is going to be super important. I mean, I think one of the things I want to mention too is like a lot of the better players, like like a higher quality players, tended to do really well at the US Open. I think the average OWGR ranking of anyone that's finished inside the top ten the last four US Opens has been like 27th in the world. So, and most of these guys, just the top players, they're all pretty good scramblers. So at the end of the day, like that was kind of my player pool. It, like you're probably going to land on those types of guys. Anyways, even if like, if we kind of disagree on the semantics, like Capra and I agreed on a lot of the same players and yeah. a lot of them just happened to be good scramblers. Just, I came to that conclusion a little differently than what he did. Yeah. And that's kind of the beauty about handicapping golf is that there's so many stats at your disposal. You can use a different route to get to the same answer. So, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, even though we, if we de- disagree on this, we're kind of, yeah, we, I mean, our fucking cars are super right, similar. It is. So like, like yeah. whatever we're, we're splitting hairs and listen, I like to fucking argue. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> this worries me because I feel like uh, it means we're going to be, we're going to have an emotional roller coaster coaster up here because we're not going to have any, any, uh, split judges. It's going to be either. We did great or we suck. No, that's not true. Sometimes I'll no. just shit on your pick to break your balls. <laughs> whether I like it or not. All right. Let's uh, let's get to DFS idol before we get to that shout out athletic greens. I know Steve uh, loves breaking down greens and uh, I love breaking down athletic greens, man. AG one. It's not the Bermuda that you uh, you guys are on, but mm. AG one seventy five high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. What a great way to start your day! Uh, again, I've noticed the energy, recovery, focus. It, it's it's great for all that. I, and again, it's it's just a good way to start your day. 
get my uh, little scoop of AG one, put it in the water, shake it up before my uh, daily cup of coffee. And I'm ready to go to make it easy. Athletic greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SGP. That's athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And we're also brought to you by IP vanish your lead pipe lock. When it comes to internet security, hiding your IP again, your browsing history, your, your personal data. You don't want that, you, you know, getting out there in the world. You don't want hackers getting that your browsing history. No. You can hide your location, unlimited uh, devices, which is great and uh, doesn't slow you down. So if you're you know traveling, lock up your IP and with IP vanish, IP vanish.com, 70% off IP vanish.com slash S G P Kramer kick things uh, off. What are you doing? DFS idol. Let's go. I mean, I know you're not. All right. So let's, let's, can we start with a question now before yeah. I it's, it's, I, I'm going to go, you know what? Fuck it here. I'm, I'm going to shoot shoot or shoot. I'm going to shoot my shot. Um, I have not seen the relative confidence uh, as a TMZ van of a golfer. Like I did when Rory McIlroy oh. was shitting on Greg Norman <laughs> in that post uh, tourney interview. And I don't know if it matters for this tournament, um, but when looking at the top of the board, I, I just immediately said, you know what? He's playing with some fucking onions. We always talked about him as a guy who had the ultimate ceiling as a golfer. And I would imagine you would say if he's playing his game, which he's in great form right now, uh, he's going to find the fairway, which you mentioned would be important. He's not going to make a mess of too many of the holes, which I think you also said was important. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, McElroy's still a good iron hitter, I believe. So ten thousand five hundred. I'm not reaching all the way to the top. Fourth highest priced guy. Uh, hoping. I assume it's going to be a little chalky. So yeah. now I, I'm going to sit and re and just listen to the the words of our great judges, Sean. Uh, who do you want to go first? Um, Steve, you go first. Oh, all right, Capper. <laughs> Uh, that's fine. So I have an irrational hate uh, for Rory. Mm. Is it because he's so, from the north? He's from the Bad is, Ireland. It's <laughs> because he's from the Bad Ireland. It, Sean is one hundred percent correct, and he said he identified more as an Englishman than an Irishman at one point, <laughs> oh and uh, that literally sent me into fucking orbit. Uh, so, well, um, however, the fucking guy definitely has a chip on his shoulder, and he went fucking nuclear on Sunday, and. He almost tried to give it away a little bit the way we normally see uh, where we try to do it. But I mean, there's literally nothing to hide here other than the fact that he's going to be super chalky. I mean, mm. fucking just one uh, in the RBC 18th and Memorial eighth, fifth, second stud, uh, stud off the tee. Like just, I mean, absolute stud off the tee. Great on approach. He had his wedges just absolutely mm. fucking firing at the RBC Canadian. Uh, I can't hate you for doing it. You better get different somewhere else. Thank you. Uh, mm. at, le at least two different places. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't like him uh, just because of <laughs> because of that, and I hope the Boston Irish Catholics give him shit for it, and uh, that'll be my that'll be Steve. My what do you got on uh, McElroy? I, I mean, it's a it's a perfectly fine pick. Uh, I mean, it, everything the stats category points to Rory. What I really like about Rory this week is I I, I feel like for the last couple of years. I've been coming on this show and our show and saying, just like, listen, he's got all the talent in the world, but like, where's that fire? Where's that motivation? Yeah. It seems like maybe this live thing might've actually like put like, you know, you know, kicked him into gear. So it would not surprise me if we are seeing Rory kind of like what he did in 2014, where he won, um, the open championship won the WGC and then won the PGA three in a row. Like Rory just starts winning everything at this point. And I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't exactly put quirk and Rory McIlroy in the same sentence, kind of like with Brookline, but he's just playing so good at this point. There probably isn't a golf course that can stop him. So that, that's a fine pick. Like my co-host said, going to be popular, but there are plenty of ways to differentiate yourself with the rest of your lineup. I feel pretty good about that one, Sean. Yeah. Fine pick. That's certainly something to, to be proud of. I didn't all get right. voted off. All right. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to start it off with my chalk, my big money pick. Give me a gentleman who uh, has 10 top 10 finishes okay. over his previous 15 events over the past six trips to the U S open. He's finished 19th, eighth, 
He missed the cut. And in 25th, the real JT. Oh, wow. Give me Justin Thomas at 10,900. Steve, what do you think about him as my big money play? I mean, I, I, lo- I love this pick too. I mean, that's another guy who's just been playing Sorry. really well over this entire what was that? I clicked the uh, wrong button, Capper. He, he thought I was going to shit on because usually I do shit on <laughs> like so like yeah, Exactly. So, so no, like th- this is another guy that I feel like has also been vocal about li- like, Listen, like I can go over the stats. You don't need to hear it. You can listen to every other show and they'll tell you how great JT looks in the stats. Like again, kind of similar vein as Rory is though. He's also been kind of vocal about live. That might be another guy that might have like a little bit of fire and belly kind of like, you know, prove to ever and stick it to these guys. Um, you know, he was actually in the mix of the RBC Canadian over had two bad bogeys down the stretch. Maybe that's actually going to put a chip on his shoulder too. And he's going to come back and win this week. He also, one of the things I really like about him too, is I used to, you know, basically refer to him as a house cat. Anytime it was windy or there's weird conditions, <laughs> wasn't robot golf. You know, just like I felt like he was just kind of, you know, I love, I love calling a, away. a golf for a house cat. Yeah, that's a great, I mean, if I, you, he, he was basically that's what he was. Yeah. adverse weather conditions. You could just count out GT, but like this year he's turning around. I don't know if it's a, if it's the influence of tiger, like just you know, mentally toughing him up, but like at the players, he had the bad ride, right? he had a great draw. He had a great round yeah. two uh, at the Southern Hills. He overcame the bad draw. I mean, he got a lot of bit, a lot of help from some chokers, but <laughs> overcame the bad draw in order to win. Uh, at Southern Hills too. So I, I can I no longer can have that take. He's a different <laughs> player now, at least mentality wise. I think he has all the tools of what it's going to take to win. It's an place. amazing way to call someone a pussy. <laughs> House cat. That's, that's exactly much better. Way. All right. So cap spelling it out for some of our audience <laughs> cap <laughs> cap or JT uh-huh. to the moon, right? Yeah, man. I fucking love JT uh-huh. uh, back to back majors. Uh, I like the fact that he changed up uh, his uh, pre-major routine, right? Because uh, before uh, guys would do the tiger route and not go out and play the week before. Well, he went out and played the Byron Nelson before the PGA came in fifth competitive, boom, won the PGA um, this, this week, final, final three grouping him, Rory Finau. They were all fucking lights. Goddamn out. Like it was a great golf to watch. Um, it almost seemed scripted. Like the PGA was like, these guys will do well to fight lift and uh, <laughs> came in third. And listen, I found this out uh, today. Did I text you today, Steve? That JT's a fucking Red Sox fan. He's got an uncle oh who lives God. in the area. I'm right. I almost <laughs> want to change my pick now. Brookline, Mass, a Boston's fan. It's too much. Man. He's also it's, a Bama too fan. Much. Yeah, that's true. I feel like that negates it, right? It evens it out, right? But listen, <laughs> uh, JT's. J, I mean, listen. I, I do. I really do like his change up of a routine. Back to back majors. Uh, he he is no longer a house cat. He's fucking great out of the sand. Great for bogey avoidance. Like, yeah, uh, he's a little squirrely off the tee, but man, you you want to talk about somebody who has like the mental toughness to win in a tough spot? It's JT, man. I I, I like that pick. Kramer, it second is, golfer. Yeah, uh, is JT the most famous JT? Yeah, we had this debate. Right, still, Justin Timberlake, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's Timberlake. It's absolutely Timberlake. <laughs> just, I'm just making sure. Your Jason uh, Tatum was trying to take over yeah. second place. No, but Jason at- Tatum is is will be lucky to be a footnote in history. If he keeps fucking playing. Like <laughs> He's this. the next okay. Kobe. Come on. Uh, yeah, what fucking balls. that was the <laughs> ultimate. Like when you're a Celtic and you're showing that Laker purple, no one's liking that. All right, shout out to Nagels. Uh, oh Xander! Because I'm I'm for ninety six hundred. Right. I'm rolling out uh, Xander Schauffele. Uh Still to this day, I would love to know the story as to why uh, Nagels loves him so much. Uh, no one knows. No one knows. It's yeah. better not to know. Ryan. Uh, you know, I was gonna I was gonna drop you a fun nugget, uh, but I think I might have closed the t- Oh, here it is. Sean. Yes. Did you know Xander has finished top seven in the last five? Straight U.S. Opens, big game hunter. Unlike that house cat J- JT <laughs> that Sean just rolled out. Uh, yeah, I went. I went with a, a couple uh, larger bullets in the repertoire. Ninety six hundred. I know Nagels loves my pick. Uh, I didn't consult him ahead of time, but I assume he does. So a capper. Yeah. So uh, I bet Xander outright uh, this week. Uh, and I'm not typically a Xander guy, right? I'm the guy who typically likes to troll people who bet Xander because it costs him his money because he doesn't fucking win, right? Well, he's coming in with less steam uh, this year. And as far as the DFS pick go, uh, is he contrarian? 
Oh, no. Xander's never contrarian, mm. right? He's never going to be contrarian with DFS. However, uh, I, have a, I have a better nugget, Brian, that the fact that he has been in the last three years of Millie Maker lineups. Ooh, that's Doesn't a great how trend. How chalky he is. He has been in the last three years of Millie Maker lineups. He's coming in in good form, right? Like his approach game, always solid. Iron game, always solid. He's got, you know, four top 20s in his last five, like a weird cut at the Masters, which nobody saw fucking coming. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it, usually he catches way more steam and you're starting to see it come up on the end of the week. Um, you're chalky in two spots already. Uh, and so a lot of builds will start like that. Rory Xander, JT Xander, um, you know, so where's I, my I mean, hard hat. I'm building, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to, we're going to have to get different down low. Uh, all yeah, right. So I Steve, love Steve love with Xander. all, um, you know, I currently have Xander slotted in, although I was going back and forth between him and Dustin Johnson. Oh, what? So, what would you rather a take tour guy? What would you rather oh, go with Xander or a Dustin guy who just Johnson got paid and has been in a cocaine for party for the past? Tw- <laughs> no, he's not going to use any of that 200 I mean, million. I mean, the smart DFS play would be to go contrary with DJ. Cause he's drawing yes. rock bottom ownership. Like yep. sub love 5%. it. 5%. Okay. Cause that's and what- look, I mean like this is a guy who has a really good us open track record. He finished 12th of the masters ninth of the players. Like he's not dead. Like I, I think like the only thing you can really pick apart with him, at least like recently off the tee hasn't been all that great. Like that's something he's been struggling with for the past, like, you know, month or so, but everything else looks okay. And it's Dustin Johnson. He can turn it around and um, I mean, especially because you went JT, a very popular pick of the first yeah. one. If you want to go DJ as a contrarian, yeah. All know, right, so I mean, even even though, even though I like like if you just put both in a vacuum, I probably like Xander better. But for DFS, mm. it's all about getting leverage, and you know DJ probably. Listen, uh, D- hey. Dustin Johnson's been using the shit out of a vacuum for <laughs> different purposes. Uh, I- yeah, I mean, can you I, imagine how good you'd be if you fucking did an eight ball and then went out and fucking <laughs> played golf? You'd be so focused on. I golf. was uh, dialed in. I'll push uh, back a little bit off the tee. He only he only lost off the tee uh, at the PGA. Other than that, this, this is my this is tee. my point. He's not what he used to be. No, it's it's the putting, okay. right? It's the putting. Well, right? no, he's, oh, he's, we he's only gained point two over his last fifty rounds. That's not DJ. Point two over what? What are you talking about? Fifty <laughs> rounds. No one cares he's, about here. 50 we go. Rounds. U.S. It's Open. He's not as good off the tee as what he used yeah. to be. Two point three at the players, oh over two at the Valspar. <laughs> Fucking, he gained at Heritage. He so one point three at at. at Byron. Sean, I was having a. Okay, dr- are you doing total or per round? <laughs> total. Okay, that's Ryan. Not we've DJ lost levels. our show. <laughs> You're I making w- my point for me, buddy. No, I was not. having a dream. He's not wild. Like, he's he's not he's not bad off. The we'll team. take this conversation offline. <laughs> no, we he's, no, he's fucking. He's not bad off. The <laughs> he's not as my, good as I'm is. not saying he's bad. I'm saying he's not as good as what he used to be. You're oh. making my point. Gaining point no five is per fucking round fucking is not DJ levels. Capper. No one is at thirty eight. Capper. All right. Listen, yes. uh, thank you for participating. I'm in really this surprised. Game, I I, could you imagine, Sean, just a time where we thought not only could Capper participate in a in an activity that involved talking, yeah, but also to hey. some. Su- well, I mean, again, handicap, <laughs> on a professional you know, sli- level. slight handicap, but, but also to to be arguing golf uh, with, yeah. with Steve. And, Did not see this and coming. To honestly, think he's right. That's it's amazing. For my, uh, so it sounds like uh, you guys uh, like all of our picks. So I, I want to, I want to throw in Dustin oh, Johnson. Doing? The U.S. Open has kind of been his sweet spot. Obviously, he won it in 2016, and they he's had his another time. He's had his most top fives, four and top tens and top twenty fives of any of the four majors. Like Dustin Johnson, the U.S. Open, they go hand in hand. Uh, I'll take your Kramer. Money on let's that. let's pick right. up the speed here. What do you got? <laughs> Third. <laughs> All right, so I'm we'll going to take this off. Let's stay chalky. <laughs> this guy was just performant as well, as you mentioned. All around good guy, an American hero, participating in the Megatron attempt to take down the live with an exciting golf. Tony Finau, always Ooh. love Tony Finau. Uh, Tony Finau, I think what I heard Steve say earlier, and maybe why you might want to fade Dustin Johnson is it's going to be important to hit the fairway. And it sounds like Tony Finau has settled in and is just. He's smacking the ball down the fairway and playing good golf. So uh, 8,200 was a little surprised to see that price. I assume that means he'll also be chalky and uh, you can continue to shame me for the chalk and the poor strategic DFS play, but don't worry. Like uh, in my uh, non-professional life, I'm happy to get different down low or, or down bottom, whatever you said. (laughs) Capper, what do you got on that pick? So I love Fina, man. Uh, he's somebody who I haven't pulled the trigger on outright yet. 
uh, Pamela Maldonado from Yahoo Sportsbook came on tonight and uh, might have finally pushed me over the level. I had him <laughs> last week. And uh, listen, he is an absolute fucking stud. I mean, he sh- by all accounts, if Rory didn't go nuclear on Sunday, yeah, like there's no there's no tournament he doesn't win with the strokes game that he did off the tee. Um, he's finally figured out putting. Um, knock on wood, the last four he's gained on it. Um, his eyes are on fire. You want to talk about somebody who could just drive the ball where they want it. Like he's, he's a stud off the tee. Um, he, another jockey, uh, another jockey guy. Uh, but he's definitely somebody who I'm thinking about betting outright. I got him all over my card as far as like matchups and things like that. I think he's going to crush it. Steve. Yeah. I mean, if you want to give an example of a guy who's been the lead off the tee, it's Tony Fino here. And I mean, these are really great levels and the iron play has been great. Like my co-host says, I have nothing to add with that other than Fino has been really good in, in major setups. Um, T eight at the, at Kiowa T eight uh, at Wingfoot, uh T four at uh, the 2020 PGA T third at the 2019 open championship. The guy just gets it done because he is really, when he's on, he's really consistent in all pretty facets of the game, especially when that putter is going to uh, it seems like he, ever since he got out of the South and out of the West and there's some greens he's a little more comfortable with that's when he's been putting a little better. So yeah, I mean like just keep it rolling with Tony Fino this week again, though, popular, mm. you probably have to differentiate somewhere oh, else. Stay tuned, Sean. Yeah. Yes. I'm doing great right now. So step your can't shit wait. up. You, I can't believe you have Dustin well, Johnson. Like Listen, I like Sean no. just as much as yours right now. No, no, we, oh, okay. he's, he's, it's he's not your turn to already. talk, Judge. It's not your turn to talk. Give me a man, a man who oh. he's oh. placed. Uh, tied. Are you sure it's a man? We, yes. we don't want to make mistakes. Uh, well, it's 2022. Again, I don't know what he's currently at, identifying wise, but as far as I know, uh, he's identified as a man. Got he's it. placed top 21st. Uh, or better in the U.S. Open six times, including a top two and a top ten performance. Very solid. He's played it eight times, only missed the cut once. Give me Hideki Matsuyama at ninety one hundred dollars. Steve, is this the type of golfer you want to play in a U.S. Of U.S. Open DFS lineup? I mean, in a vacuum, it would be. I mean, Ooh. he's got a good combination of length and accuracy off the tee, good iron play. The scrambling is always pretty good. It's been a really interesting last couple of months for him, though. He was battling a neck injury for a little bit. You know, he had a lot of steam coming into the PGA. I liked him a lot for the PGA because I just uh, I saw him at the Masters and he played great despite the neck injury. Apparently, that flared up again. He had T60 finish. He got disqualified from the Memorial and yeah. Uh, he wasn't playing all that great in that tournament through 11 holes. And then before he got bounced. So, you know, it's kind of, we haven't seen, we've only basically seen 11 holes from Hideki over the last month. Like I, you know, it's, if he's going to have a little bit of rust, you know, typically you want to play guys who at least have played once in the last two weeks. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, listen, like, you know, his U S open his 9,100. Okay. His best finish was the Aaron Hills. Other than that, though, you know, it's it's been okay for him. So I don't know. I think we have a little bit of a mystery what we're gonna get from Hideki this week. Oh, so kind of the judge to not just completely <laughs> shred you there. Uh, uh Capper, Hideki. Oh, I- yeah. So listen, I mean, I'm just going to echo what he said, right? So other than the fact that I would like this as a pivot play, but you already have a pivot play above. Yeah. Right? You already have somebody who's going to be like 5% owned. So, you know, Decky low ownership is, you know, somewhere between like nine and 12%. Um, but if he is healthy, I mean, this is a guy who can grind, right? Uh, he's all world iron player. Um, I, I, I don't know. Let me see how the rest of your, your, your build goes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you need to get that cute twice in the nine K okay. range. Well, come, come on. Um, no, wow. I'm just, listen, I'm just saying. Like, I didn't know if you need to get that cute in the nine K range. I like. I like a decky. Like, I, I toyed with the idea. I fuck. I had him outright at wherever the fuck he got DQ'd from, but he started off like Steve said. Terrible. Yeah, so it's a it's a redemption story. Hideki Matsuyama. All right, Kramer, yeah, what I'll, do you got? I'll, I'll, Second half. Let's move on. It's bargain it's basement. Not what are we doing? Well, for you. All right. As these guys have uh, repeatedly told you, I'm chalky. Yes, but chalk wins sometimes, and I assume this will be a little different. I, uh, I'm going to take a, a player out of your playbook, Sean. Oh wow! Uh, I believe his irons have been strong lately. Again, Steve uh, made the point that that was going to be important. Uh, Steve stepped away. N- not even, or I'm sorry, C- Capper stepped away because <laughs> he knows he's going to love this pick. Uh, but yeah, this is one of your guys, Sean, and uh, taken uh, not a, a man from the northern part of Ireland, but uh, or Northern Ireland, but from England, Tommy Fleetwood. Seventy-seven hundred. I was toying with him. 
you were you and uh, Cap are like to toy with these guys. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I I think uh, you know when you when when I get down to this seven thousand dollar range. It's a combination of me looking at guys who I can trust in a big set. I, I think with the U.S. Open and the Masters, it's like mental head case guys, and he's played well at a U.S. Open. I, I believe I, I could be wrong here. W- was it three years ago or two years ago? He almost he almost won. Um, it was, uh, four four years ago. Four years ago. There you go. And so I I'm I'm gonna go seventy seven hundred. Tommy Fleetwood. I also uh, from what I think he will not be a hyper popular play. And maybe this helps me. No, he's going to be pop. Fuck. T- All right, Steve, you go first. Well, I mean, this isn't a guy that we really talked about a whole lot this week. Uh, and I, I don't think Capper has him on the betting card. We did barely mention him in the DFS show, mm-hmm. I gotta even though he is popular. Got him in a matchup. Okay, you got him in a matchup. So, so here's the thing with Fleetwood that. Uh, so the iron play has been really good. What concerns me about Fleetwood is like. You don't, I, I tended to shy away from guys who didn't really have like elite length and also weren't very accurate. I feel like that's a little bit of a problem here. Mm-hmm. Like I either want like super accurate guys or just the bombers. Like they kind of just the extremes, the guys kind of in the middle don't haven't really been doing too well at US Open, especially it's ones where it's narrow fairways and deep rough. And you kind of see that in Tommy Fleetwood's uh, resume at the US Open. So the two US Opens he did well at 2018 at Shinnecott, 2017 at Aaron Hills, a lot of room off the tee, pretty oh, wide man. fairways. The ones where you haven't done so good. 2021 U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, T50, narrow fairways, deep rough. All 2020 right. U.S. Open at Wingfoot, cut, narrow fairways, deep rough. 2019 Pebble Beach, T65, narrow fairways, deep rough. So I think the point for me is I think he needs a lot of room to operate off the tee. The ones where it's been a little narrower, the deep rough, he hasn't been as good. So I don't really like the pick this week. Oh, so, yes. so he said it. I don't like so your pick. So would you prefer? <laughs> To take someone like Canadian Corey Connors or uh let's say uh someone like a South Korean Soon Jae Im. Uh we're not a just you, you can't take you can't Move take Soon You're already way too fucking yeah. All right. So Look, Jae Im's gonna be the highest player. Stick highest with stick with your first instinct, Ryan. I'm not talking to you, Sean. We gotta go down and play craps. Come <laughs> no, on. You're right. This I'm is sorry. getting insane. <laughs> All right. My well, pick. Fuck you too, Sean. <laughs> uh, no offense, we are sitting above a casino. I would, I would feel the same. I would ha- be happily help you get back to the craps table. All right, here we go. Um, wait, did did Capper weigh in? He shit on it, right? I mean, come on. No, I didn't shit on it. I, I, like, I'm fine with it. Like, I think it's okay. Uh, I think the the fairways mm-hmm. gonna be a little more forgiving than maybe Steve thinks, but he's right. <laughs> like, he's not wrong. Like, uh, and he's. Kind of popular, so I don't know. I'm fine oh, with it. Well, you that's mentioned, horrible news. You, you mentioned. I listen. I, I listen. I don't think he's a bad pick. I don't. I don't think he's a bad pick. I just. I mean. I don't know. Let's see how the rest of the cat plays out. I, I, I like Connor's better. <laughs> that okay. All Pen- right. Here we go. Amendment. I'm. I'm selecting a man who is seventy two hundred dollars. And here's some nuggets about Did someone him. give you feedback that you should make sure to let Did people I know the golfers the are men <laughs> averaging 309.3 <laughs> yards off the tee while also splitting 61.57% of the fairways, a 37 year old man, give it up for uh, uh, also 14 of the last 15 cuts. Jason co crack at $7,200 capper. How say you? Uh, no. Uh, he, he has he has improved a lot out of the sand. Right? He, really, he, he really has. <laughs> but he, and you're right. Like this, this is actually. So I actually have him in a matchup against somebody. Okay, um, I, he's seventy two hundred. Yeah, I know that's fine. But I mean, look, uh, his putting kind of left him the last time we saw him at Schwab. Is around the green game has always been a little suspect. Um, he used to be really really bad out of the sand, and. Over the last year, he's done better at it. I don't know if he can. I don't know if that's going to keep going or not. I don't know. Look, he did well at the Masters, where I didn't think he was going to do good at the Masters. Top top fifteen at the Masters, I think it was in fifteen or twenty. I can't remember. Um, I I don't know. He's a live guy. Uh, oh, wow. So you're definitely you're definitely going to get like low ownership on him. I mean, I, I I don't. I just feel like you're pivoting to pivot. At this point, wow, wow! They let they let you pivot three times in the NBA. <laughs> I don't know if they do over here. Steve, co crack. Do I do I have a case here? I mean, look, like <laughs> he does have the cheat code that 
yes. distance has really mattered in recent U.S. Opens. It doesn't really matter where the venue was. If he hit it a long ways, that's a big advantage. The rest of his game, though, is a little checkered. I mean, his iron <laughs> game has really fallen off from where it was last year when he was winning, uh, what, three or four yeah, no, times. Three, yeah. um, like, I, I said that, like, look, like, I, as long as you're not a disaster around the green, I'll consider you. He's actually really regressed in that category where it's a little too ugly for me now. The putting has been okay. Um, I mean, I'm looking at his U.S. Open history. The one he's done best, he finished top 20 at the U.S. Open in Wingfoot, but that one just favored bombers because no one hit fairways that week. It didn't matter how accurate you were off the tee or, or not. Like, it just everything was going the rough and all that matters is how far he hit it. So of course the guy like would do well there. So not a huge fan of Jason Kokrak this week. Oh boy. Our, our confidence is rattled. Kramer finish strong. Two more golfers. What do you uh, got? All right. I'm just going to go with old regular and I, I have maybe some shuffling here, depending on what they're, what they say yeah, about this. We don't allow that. Um, I'm going to, I, I feel like you do have to have a little live love uh, from an ownership <laughs> love laugh. Um, so I went with a dude, a, a, a dude, he is a male as well. Uh, who, why are we qualifying this? I don't Cause know. Uh, it's, it's Sean keeps bringing it up. Ryan's hung up on gender. I don't see gender. You guys, you guys have been in California too long. Diff, <laughs> the most, uh, so on difficult courses, Louis Stason, Ooh, eighth, yes. strokes gained. I assume this is T to green. Uh, didn't I, my note cut off after the the strokes gain? So, so apologies for not get, getting focused on the stat there. Um, yeah, again, seventy six hundred. Uh, he's got what it takes between the ears. He has big ears, and I, of the guys who I could stomach from the live tour, he was he was near the top of my list because dudes from South Africa are fucking badasses. Seventy six hundred. Steve, tell me you like this pick. I, mean, I don't mind the pivot oh. play here. Like I, I'm looking at what he's done. This year. He hasn't played a whole lot of golf though. I mean, his last three events was live in London last year or last week, T 10 for that was the PGA before that was the masters where he withdrew. So not mm. a lot of golf recently, but you know, look like if you're just looking for narrative street, like he does show up in majors, it is a pivot play and he does have the pedigree to get it done in a tough right. setup. So I, I don't mind it here. It just, you're banking on faith and history with him. The stats don't really look good for him overall, but just the fact that he does, you know, tend to show in these events, I don't mind going for Louie here at like, you know, sub 10%. All right. That's not horrible capper. Yeah. I mean, I kind of echo, like I said, the same oh, kind of thing, right? I would just say that if you're, you definitely needed a pivot play, right? Um, however, there is a live guy who I like uh, is a little cheaper. Who's in much better form and younger at Taylor Gooch. Uh, oh. and, and you're going to get even lower ownership at, really? um, yeah. So last yeah, time I, I mean, changed look, my lineup because of you, it, it made it worse. <laughs> so listen, listen I, I'm not putting a gun to your fucking head. I'm giving you my opinion. <laughs> so oh, Someone's uh, getting sensitive. <laughs> what? I'm just ask you a question. Thursday, you sound like my wife. Like, you tweeted me fucking some garbage on fucking Thursday. And the guy ended up bouncing and missing the cut or came in 59th because that I was funny. It was, it was, it was like yeah. Justin Rose. You signed for lead. And then he went like bogey, 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 bogey. As soon yeah, as right. that <laughs> funny how that happens. Yeah. Just it's Thursday on golf. Fucking relax. Just boys. blowing in the wind, baby. All right, Sean, who's your second to last guy. They, they didn't love my who They didn't he's, hate it though. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Uh, my confidence is rattled. Yeah. He's a, his Italian gentleman <laughs> making a little comeback. Uh, he's made three straight cuts. He had, you know, he was a much better player 2017, 2019, but he's, he's on the comeback trail. <laughs> he has, he's a veteran. He's had 11 Are you US Open Greg appearances. Norman? <laughs> Give no, me. It's, it's Molinari. Molin <laughs> Francisco Molinari. Capper, $6,900. Explain to me why this is a great pick. <laughs> I love Molinari. Yes. Um, let's I go. think. Uh, I think I got him as a top 20 at over five to one. Wow. Uh, he's, he's been playing. So it's weird. Like we don't really know what happened. He just kind of disappeared for a while after tiger uh, sucked his soul and fucking like, just, just murdered him uh, at the masters. He came back. Um, he moved out West. I think your guys way. I think he's in California or Nevada. One or the other took some time off and now he's coming back and he's been a pretty decent form lately, man. $6,900. Like, um, and you're not going to get crazy high ownership on him. I don't, I don't even think he's going to go over 5%. Um, I like it a lot. He's got a good nice job, US man. open history. And look, if this is going to be a place where 
it's not completely necessary for you to finish good. Uh, if you're long off the tee, then yeah, he definitely fits this mold. And I would much rather him than Kevin, Na, Brandon Grace, uh, guys like that around there. I mean, look, he's got two on oh, not top 25. I think he ended up T 26 at the Memorial, but listen, uh, you know, he's great around the green, great out of the sand. He can putt, and he's got the pedigree. Um, I love Molinari at fucking 69. Love him. Kevin, nah. All right, Steve, uh, you want to co-sign how this is an amazing pick at the price? I mean, I think it's okay. I, like I echo what my co-host said. He has been playing a little better lately. Not just, quite I, the same enthusiasm. I, I, I always get concerned anytime you're picking a guy who is as short as he is off the tee oh. and loses as much strokes mm. he is off the tee. And he also isn't as accurate off the tee as what he used to be either, too. Like that's really gone downhill. So the margin for error for him is really tiny. If he has a really poor driving week, like he's oh, gonna he's get fucked. bounced up bounce yeah. immediately. Yeah. So you're going to have to find like he has shown well over the last couple of turns, a little better control, at least with accuracy. If that shows up and he's hitting a lot of fairways and yeah, sure. I could buy it. He's hitting his irons pretty good, but man, like if he gets off the box poorly, it's going to be a short week. He's going to go to the North end. He's going to go get some gabagool and he'll be fucking fine. And he'll feel this right isn't, at home. This isn't Brookline mass. And I'm betting on an Italian. I feel like that's a great combo. There's no Brook. There's no Italians in Brookline. It's a bunch oh. of wasps. Right. Wasps. Uh, All yeah. wasps. It's amazing I, it was, you it was get that finish. word out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I was sitting here. What do you well, got? I, I just, I think I just late swapped uh, Gooch in for uh, Usti. For no, not for Usti. For uh, I'm going double lib uh, for uh, Ooh, Fleetwood. Fleetwood. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, anyway, to finish for the record, it, I didn't, I didn't recommend that, so I don't want a fucking. No, no, that's all right. I'll let you. Like, I'll complain anyway. Don't worry. Uh, for I'm my, sure. for my last guy. <laughs> I only had sixty six hundred dollars, and you know this is the time that you, if you, there's a good sixty six hundred dollar golfer you like, feel feel free to let me know after I make a fool of myself. But uh, the top ranked amateur in the world uh, didn't do all that well in the Masters. I think shot like an eighty maybe on Friday. Uh, anyway, since then, Nakajima has been lighting it up on the Japan Tour. I know, I know this is a complete pump play, uh, but I figured why not take someone who's an up and comer, a young whippersnapper, someone with the talent to play with the big, I mean, what did he, Steve, what did he shoot on the, in the first round at the masters? I don't even, I don't even remember. Not, not good. It was, it was good. I'm looking it up while, while you critique this, I'm going to look it up. Cause I believe he shot maybe one over anyway, 21 years old. Let's fucking go. Keith Ki, uh, Kieta Nakajima. Great sign. Six Great thousand. sign of your pick that you don't know his fucking name. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't fucking watch golf all the time like you. <laughs> I watch golf all the time and I don't know who this fucking okay. guy is. I mean, I, so I know Steve? Vaguely who this guy he, he is a stud amateur golfer. No. Like he is gonna be once he breaks away from the Japan tour. Although we've said that about a bunch of guys before and they never get away from Japan, so what I don't about, know. What I, about I, Min Lee? What about Min Lee's way more talented, right? He stinks, though. <laughs> he's better than this he's fucking done, guy. He, I, I know, but he's <sighs> he's done. He's been playing a bunch of PJ Tour on sponsors. I mean, she's done nothing over here. You got, so uh -huh. look, like okay. I, I think you might have to look at some roster construction because, <laughs> like, wow, Steve, what, stop in the show. Again, the problem, the problem with the U.S. Open is it's not like like the PJ has like. Under seven thousand, you had like a lot of really good tips because they're established PGA Tour stars. You can kind of trust them. Like once you get under seven thousand dollars here, because it's right. an open format, like it gets really ugly quick. And so, like, like I'm looking at some of the names around, like, like Stewart and Damon, like Sam Horsfield. Don't talk about and, my guy. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, what about I my boy? Know. What about my boy Hossler? Oh, what? Right. What about? Yeah, Bob? that's 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 okay. Uh, I, I think that's fine. Think Sean hasn't gone yet. <laughs> Sean you guys are ruining it. it. All right, Cap Sean, we we hate fucking Ryan's pick. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So what, well, what I I most? unlike Ryan, I'm a company man. I support mm. the writing and reading efforts of one Boston Capper. So I read his article. Wait, he writes, and he likes Boo Hostler <laughs> eight to one to go top twenty. Of course, Let's I'm going to throw him in there. The anchor to my DFS lineup, only sixty four hundred dollars. Capper, why do you like this guy? So uh, he's very hot putting and he gained seven strokes, uh, almost eight on, on his last tournament. Listen, his irons are absolute trash. And this is a, this is a complete dice roll. It's eight to one top 20 for a reason. Uh, but uh, on comp courses, he's played pretty well. Came in third at pebble. Um, 
I just hope that, and he just missed another top 20, two top 20s out of his last four uh, when he lost a stroke putting at the Schwab. So I will, uh, I will bet that his putting comes back and his irons still say just as terrible. And somehow he can get up and down around this place. I mean, it's 6,400 bucks. And yeah. So you're saying you like him more than my top uh, amateur. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Those guys who are like 15 yes. over and don't make the cut. Yeah. Yeah. The guy who the guy who got third at Pebble Beach with very small greens and trash approach play. Yes, I will take that guy mm. all day, every day over the top amateur. Maybe I'll late. Uh, Steve, any any thoughts there on uh, the one boo? I mean, look, he's probably going to get cut, but like, <laughs> as far as everybody down here, my co-host made a good case. Like, there are some things going for Hostler that. Or sorry, he is long off the box. He is a decent scrambler. The putter can be a little hit or miss. The iron play is really atrocious, oh, though. So, <laughs> so like, like, like a scenario I see with Hostler, just like maybe some wins end up kicking up there unexpected. Just everybody misses greens. It comes an up and down game, like similar to like a Patrick Reed or like a Mackenzie Hughes, like something like that. Um, that's really what you're banking on, though. I mean, he has been playing a little better, but Steve, um, Steve's great. Even yeah. when he's like going, trying so hard to compliment you and not be super negative, his compliments are more brutal. Uh, you know, than if the insults. rest of the Steve, the field gets you see salmonella. Why I go to therapy now, guys. You yes. see what happens? <laughs> Steve's trying to Ugh. he's trying to be like, okay, yeah, I see it, but in this scenario, for him to be good <laughs> and lays out this insane scenario that will never happen. Oh, all right, good job. <laughs> All right, fun times. We all gotta around. play craps. You want to give it a better too, Sean? Yeah, Kramer, uh, close it out with some of your best bets, and then we'll we'll kick it to we'll we'll go Capper and, and Steve. Obviously, you guys giving out a ton on your podcast, but um, what are, what are a couple of big takeaways you guys like? I know you're giving out a ton. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com <laughs> and the podcast, but Capper, you first. Uh, what what what's some fun bets you want to throw out? So, I mean, first round leaders for me are always fun. Oh you know, yes, those full, are great. I was, on, I, I was on a full week run here up until this last week where I had the guy who gave in second. Uh, oh. So, uh, so that was pretty brutal. I like uh, Young, Will Z, Neiman, uh, local boy Keegan at fucking eighty to one. Let's go, let's go, fucking Keegan. Hold on, I gotta flip. Now I gotta remember. Where the fuck. <laughs> I mean, we have the I same go, personal leaders. I just list mine for you. Yeah, guys, list them up. Yeah, All right, so up. so I, I like Spieth. I like Zalatoris, Horace, Cam Young, mm. Jano Berger, Joaquin Neiman, Billy Horschel, Max Homa, Aaron Wise. We basically do a lot of crossover. Pretty much on Thursday, what's going to happen is it looks like it's pretty calm conditions. The golf course probably going to be a little softer from rains over the, the week. Going to firm up as the week goes on. They're going to get some wind in the afternoon, so probably first round leaders going to come from the morning. So target a lot of those guys, you know. Um, uh, speed 33. Yeah. All right. Yep. That's fun. Uh, Kramer, what do you got? Uh, all right. So, <laughs> well, I, I mean, I was looking, I'm clicking around cause there's golf as per usual. Uh, I was a trying to make sure I captured all the first round leaders. Of course, if I was just you know, fu- I put on a card uh, every I, week on Twitter. Capper, this right, is you called. Know, you could, you could uh, give him a follow on Twitter hey, at Gambling Pod or Golf Gambling Podcast. If Capper wasn't so quick to yank back the curtain and show everyone his dick, what I was gonna say is, <laughs> wow, uh, boy, I really need I was, to follow. I was, I was acquitted of that charge. W- once Thank you, once again, Ryan. Thank you. stomping on my plug of his <laughs> at uh, Golf Gambling Pod because there are some beautiful fucking graphics that have a for that, for the person who's like, Hey, Hey, I don't have time to listen and remember. Uh, yeah. Follow them. Put it all out in written format for you losers who can't listen to a goddamn podcast. Capper's right. getting me grumpy. We're not playing craps yet. Now I got my bets up in front of me. Uh, I did note all of those first round leaders. Uh, it sounds like uh, I should be flocking to the window to play Mr. Tony Finau. Plus one forty for a top twenty. Uh, Fuck it, yes! It sounds Fuck like yes. you guys are saying like that's a mortal lock, and in the NFL, that's a plus two and a half dog. So uh, give me that oh. on the money line. Uh, another guy who again didn't run right to the top of the board, but in the top twenty market. Oh, where is he? I had Corey Connors down. He was in my DF, uh, DFS lineup at one point. He's plus one ninety. I so I don't know if this is accurate, uh, Sean. Um, but I found I'm having the most success in the top twenty, uh, and so the, I'll sprinkle one more uh, top twenty that I found here based on again uh, maybe the uh, sprinkling a little live love. But Taylor Gooch plus two fifty uh, for a top twenty. I don't hate it. Uh, He's got a bad draw though. He's got the bad draw. 
No, oh, does he? All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I think the USGA conspired to put a lot of those lip guys in the PM. On There's the a bunch side. of them in that PM. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Uh, anything I have, uh, I have one more uh, bet, uh, and this was purely uh, me wanting to make sure I had a matchup prop. Oh, God! Do you play the matchups at all, Sean? Uh, occasionally. So I, I just oh, said very lies, lies, Sean. I can see it on your fucking face. <laughs> just oh, that's why I say occasionally. <laughs> Every time I play them, I get boned, so I'm not that interested. Uh, so very simply love the moxie McElroy's playing with wanted to find a way to get him on a card. So I'm just going to play him heads up against that house cat, Justin Thomas. Oh, all right. So first off my first pick, Justin Thomas over Rory McElroy. Ooh, head to head. Let's go. Let's go. Then give me Justin Thomas to win it all again. It's, oh. it's only like 10 to one on win bet, but I'm tired of not taking a little bit of chalk here uh, for some of these, for some of these guys. Uh, toss in there. I'll I'll steal Capper's pick and Steve's pick of uh, Will <laughs> Zalatoris first round leader. That's a very generous price for a, a, a young guy who you know he's, he's a young energy guy. For him to get out to that early lead and completely unravel. Holy shit! I'm sorry, Sean Fino. Top five is seven to one. I or, sorry. Return to your normal programming. Will Zalatoris first round leader. I'm gonna steal Capper's uh, Bo Hostler at Ooh. eight to one just to get That's in the top cool. twenty, oh. and then. Uh, <laughs> Give me Hideki Matsuyama to win it all, as well as my long shot. So I think you can give oh, him. Oh my God! Hold on, I just found top twenty parlays. <laughs> golf betting really is the best. It is. It is. If you could have it is. these these top twenty parlays, you guys could do top twenty this, and then you could parlay it with a top forty. If if Governor Ron DeSantis wasn't so concerned with everything else, like just fucking legalize sports gambling, we you fill fund you, bro. whatever evil empire you want to fund, DeSantis. Let's go. Can we get it? Fund I mean, I, I'm, with I'm, I'm home, with you. Please. Like everyone wins if we legalize this stuff. Legalize oh, it, fucking, baby. It's a nightmare. I got to worry about Costa Ricans, assholes in California, <laughs> assholes in Texas. Like I fucking oh, local, those my are locals. Just so we're no. clear, those are personal decisions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm aware. That's about it. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, forty to one, is my uh, is my long shot there. All right, this was a lot of fun. Hey, we're also doing a two hundred fifty dollar uh, U.S. Open contest exclusively on the SGPN app. Just download the SGPN app, hit the contest tab. You can't miss it. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe to the Golf Gambling Podcast. Give a uh, Capper a follow on Twitter as well at Boston <laughs> underscore Capper. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Wheel, man. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he's Ryan. USA, USA. Kramer, let it ride.